we get away from the history here of this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is construct an argument and the form in everyday speech, we screw these up on purpose. We give the statements in no specific order, so we could give the conclusion first, premises. Might, remember, we might even use an enthymeme and hide a premise rather than state it outright and assume that the person's going to fill it in, right? You know, we could do all that. But if I'm going to actually construct the, the argument in a way that you can see the form and I can check it and see which kind of syllogism it is, and there are 256. Two hundred and fifty six possible syllogisms. Then what I want is the conclusion to be in the bottom, and the very first premise will be the major premise, and the middle one, the second one, will be the minor premise. So they'll always be arranged major, minor, conclusion. I think I'll just turn this off. And do it this way. one movie where the professor was writing on the board and as he was walking along his oh, fat I've stomach erased everything he just wrote <laughs> so when he got to the did you ever see that movie? Which one was that? Wasn't it like Flubber or, oh, yeah. or something like that? With Robin Williams. So I have A statements, all S or P, and I have E statements, no S or P, and I have I statements, some S or P, and I have O statements, some S or not P, right? So if I'm going to have an argument, I have to have three statements, and if I'm going to have an argument with, let's say, three A statements, as most of these have been so far, right? Then I can say the mood of my syllogism is A, A, A. The next thing that I have to add to it is called the figure. And we have four possible figures. So one, two, three, four. And if I'm going to have a major premise, and then a minor premise, and then a conclusion, the major always has to go on the top. 
So if that's the case, then, and, and my conclusion is always going to be at the bottom, and it's always going to be subject predicate. So I can put that down four times. Subject predicate, subject predicate, and subject predicate. But the other terms will be the major term, which will be P, the major term. And the minor term will be S. And the major term has to be in the major premise, and the minor term has to be in the minor premise. So the very first one will be for my major term. So I will have P here, P here, P here, and P here for the four figures. My minor term is S. So I will have that. So I want um, MP, PM, PM. I want S. And I want S. So what I've got are the four figures, which in the book you can look at page 237. You see right in the middle of the page it says the four figures. So notice the middle term is here and here in figure one. Figure two, it's here and here. In figure three, it's here and here. And in figure four, it's here and here. So if you think of it in this diagram, figure one always goes this way, well, this way. Figure two is always on the right. Figure three is always on the left. Okay. And figure four goes this way. Those are the four figures. But what are they, though? Well, I'm talking about the middle term, the major term, the minor term, the middle term, minor term, major term. Same thing here, except now I've got the major term. And this is where it's confusing, because in this argument form, my major premise is going to have the predicate term on the left side, which is why I think, well, we've, we should have come up with a long time ago a better way of explaining this, because that's very confusing, because you think, well, wait a minute, the predicate should always be on the right in a, in a categorical statement, because it's always subject predicate. Well, but once we get to the argument forms, they throw that out, and they mix you up, and they throw uh, the predicate term on either side because there's four logical places for you to have both, the, right? As you can see, this pattern, right? Um, by, by putting it up this way, you can see that I'm taking both the major term and the minor term and arranging them in their logical possible ways, right? Uh, in this case, predicates either on this side or this side, and that repeats. But now I'm doing the same thing with this, the, um, the minor term. On this, in this case, I have it on the left side, and in this case, I have them both on the right side. So it gives me all four logical possibilities. Right? So I can have AAA is my mood, figure one. Or I could have AAA figure two, figure three, figure four. 
then I can have EEE, -E -E, figure one, figure, right? Figure two, et cetera. So I have, I um, forget how to figure it out. It's, I think, 128 possible moves, 64 possible figures. So you put the two of them together and you get 256. Did I do that right? Any mathematicians out, out there? Seems like it should be a bigger number. That's the real. Yeah, maybe that's wrong. Sixty. It says in the, uh, it says in the book. Uh, what number is it? In the book? I can't. It's only. There's only one right it's number. Two pages. Six. Sixty-four times four. Oh, four. I'm just gonna on two thirty-seven. Just four, because there's four figures. Four times four times four is sixty-four. And then. But we also know that there are four figures to consider, and therefore we get 64 times 4 is 256. That's very cool. Cool. Never, I'm getting old, so you have to check everything. Thanks. Where did all the moods go? Are those the 64? It seems like there ought to be more, but I guess there is. So, how did you get the MPS? Like, how do you? Figure out that what goes okay, where. Okay, so let's let's do some. Let's do AAA one first, which, by the way, is Barbara. 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 They all the valid ones have names. So Any names in the book. I think so. They're on the internet. There might, I think they're on a footnote or something. And so why Barbara? Well, there's A, A, A. And there's also other codes. I'll tell you this one is figure one. But so, so let's do um, A, 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 one. And we'll see why it's figure one, right? So all, all, all. All S is P. Conclusion is always going to be S is P, right? So if I want figure one, I put my middle term here and here. See it? And then this is my major term, and then this is my minor term, right? So now I have figure one, A, A, A. So that's Barbara, A, 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 one, right? And let's fill in stuff. We could, so for example, all crows are black. Is that good? That's true. Um, so my major term is black. And my minor term is crows. And I can say Corvids. So my argument goes, all corvids are black, all crows are corvids, so therefore all crows are black. Is it true that all, not all corvids are black? What's a corvid? It's the family that crows are in, but that includes magpies, and magpies are not just black. So I meant... I, I was hoping for a, a, a sound argument, but I screwed it up because this is false. Sorry about that. Corvids, that includes ravens, crows, magpies. Are jays corvids? Anybody know? The burgers up there? Corvids are really smart. The corvid over at the, the Anchorage Zoo is named George, and we'll talk to you. You're familiar with the magpie over there? We have George. He, talk, he actually talks. <laughs> okay. But now, what we're looking at is the form of the argument. It didn't have to be, you know, it, it's a valid form. It's valid, but the, the truth value of it is. 
uh, this is false in that case, because it's not true that all orchids are. In fact, I've seen an albino raven. Theoretically, the 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 logic that you have set up. I mean, you could say all chickens were yeah. Snickers bars, but yeah, we can change this. <laughs> I, I'm not attached <laughs> to crows. And it doesn't have to necessarily that, uh, be true, but if you're if, if you build an argument with this kind of validity, it holds, holds validity even though it may not be true. Just with the that's strictly with the modern look at things, right? Versus the traditional, which is it doesn't exist. Then it's yeah, I want I want sets with existing members. So all women are. Brilliant. All persons are brilliant. All women are persons. Therefore, all women are brilliant. It's kind of interesting because if I use just circles like this, instead of a Venn diagram, and I say this is my middle term, this is my minor term, and this is my major term, and say all of my middle term are major term, and all of my minor term are major term, then notice you can easily see all of my minor term are major term. So you can see that this is a valid argument for. So that's AAA1 because it's of this figure. But now let's change the figure. <coughs> and see what happens. Right? This one does not have a name. like this, right? All P is M, all S is M, all S is P. So now I'm looking at figure two, right? So the mood of this syllogism is A, 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 but now the figure is figure two, so the name of this syllogism is A, 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 two. Not Barbara? Not Barbara. Barbara is only A, 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 one. They all, you know, all the valid ones have names. This one's invalid, and the reason it's invalid, you'll see that it's invalid. Why? Um, let's let's fill it in with a, a, a an example. Um, let's see, all cats are animals. Cats are animals. So animals is over here. Now. Cats are here. And what we want for so all animals are life forms living. All cats are living. So all animals are living things, all cats are living things, therefore all cats are animals. feels like it's right, right? That's true, that's true, that's true. Well, I could be happy. You know, we could be happy about that. But here's here's the problem. If I draw a different approach to this, and this, I think the book goes like, like this. 
Yeah. So it looks almost like a Mickey Mouse with the two ears. And this is our minor term, and this is our major term. Notice that in a diagram for an argument, it always goes that direction. So the conclusion is always going to be minor is predicate. Right? And my middle term is down here. And if you think about it, what's happening is I'm giving a premise that contains the major term and the middle term. And then another premise that contains the middle term and the minor term. And because of the information that I get from those two premises, that should give me information that connects the minor term and the major term, the conclusion, right? So my first premise is going to go either this way or this way, on this side, right? My second premise is going to go this way, this way. Right? And from that, I can look at the relationship that these two have and see if it's given or not. Is that helpful? That's why I like using them. <laughs> Let's see how this helps us analyze the argument form. Because remember, I know offhand right away that this is an invalid form and the reason for it is both of these are undistributed because I know an A statement distributes only this term not this one. And the problem with an argument, one of the things, in order for me to give you enough information in my premises so that you know something for sure about the conclusion, I have to distribute the middle term in at least one premise. But in this particular form, I haven't. I haven't distributed either premise with the middle, the middle term in either premise. So if I go and I draw this in here now, so my major premise, all P is M. So all of my P, is also in here. That's M, right? So there are no members of P up here, right? The second premise. Did I do that right? When I drew the, the first one goes this way, not that way. I, yeah. I screwed that up. Sorry, it's the opposite. Okay. And then the second premise, my minor premise, all my subject are also M, so that means there are no members up here. By the way, you can see if I drew the A statement, all P is M, so I'll put the P over here and the M over here, right? And drew it like this, right? All P is M. And if I took this picture and turned it to fit here, notice that's exactly how I drew that for that premise. Right? And if I drew this one, this one here, right? So I've got S and M, right? Notice it goes the same way, right? Because it's an A statement. Right? A statement's always the same. Now if I took this one, turned it, this M, right? Notice that's exactly how I drew it in. See how it works? And now that I've done that, now I can look at the conclusion and see if it's given. And you never draw in the conclusion, because the reason that you're doing this diagram so that you can see if you draw in the premises, then you look to see if the conclusion is already there. 
And in this case, it's all S is P. So here's all S, P. Well, wait a minute. I have lots of potential S that are in this section that are not in P. So I might even draw like a question mark there. What about all these guys? You haven't convinced me. There might be some S that's not P. So this is an invalid form. Right? Because there might be still some members of S that are not P even though it says all S is P, but you haven't shown that. 